Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chaplain Mariano Biazon from Norfolk Seaman Friends Society. Just want to say hi to uh, all our viewers, uh, our seafarers, friends, uh, uh, the crew, crew members, and captains, and the first chief mate. And uh, uh, we just, I just want to greet everybody uh, from all over the world all our seafarers that are in the ship. Um, we uh, like to let you know that uh, we are continue to pray for you and uh, that the Lord will uh, will soon uh, give you a, a break uh, that that you will be uh, able to go home to your to your uh, families and that there will be a change of crew in the ships and um, just today we saw a couple of ships today that are that are uh, in our harbor and and uh, we would like to continue to serve them and help them any way we can uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic so uh, today I just want to uh, uh, encourage you with the word of God and and uh, to uh, to teach you how to cope uh, during COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, how do we cope? How do you cope with this? How do you uh, handle? How do you handle not just the uh, uh, the crisis, the pandemic crisis, but also uh, any crisis in your life? How do you handle uh, problems? How do you handle uh, uh, the uh, big uh, uh, crisis that is that's happening in your life so uh, uh, I want to uh, share to you uh, comes from the Word of God uh, to encourage you uh, to uh, how to handle the situation uh, that you're in right now uh, all of us need some kind of uh, uh, direction and encouragement and and what's happening uh, around the world and what's the uh, the the results of, of all the pandemic that is that is happening uh, so first uh, we need to look for God as our source of strength you know the psalmist says that the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life and whom shall I be afraid so when we face a crisis when we face uh difficulties and when we and how we cope with it uh is we look at we look up to god um which is our source of our light when all the darkness is happening around us he is our light he is our source of light and when there is fear uh we need uh salvation from him and and that's why uh, we need to start with God. And the psalmist says, The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? So when when we learn that the Lord is our strength, excuse me, we should have no problem. Uh, we should have no uh, uh, problem being afraid. We should be uh, not fearful. Uh, we are may be afraid but God will be our strength okay um, and also the Bible says his word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path so if we have some questions concerning uh, the situation like the the COVID-19 pandemic uh, we, we need to look on the word of God as our as our uh, guidance as our uh, source of strength and also as a, a light unto our path. And so the Bible says that the word is the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we would like to um, uh, to look on the word of God as, as our uh, source of light and source of direction concerning uh, this uh, pandemic crisis that is happening around the world there 
people are facing different uh, situation uh, like those of you who are in the war in the ship maybe uh, you are get stuck there and you get extended uh, um, I know a uh, seafarer that was uh, we visited a couple of days ago he uh, he's he's actually spent two birthdays in the ship because of his extension they they extended him uh, beyond his contract and and that is basically what's happening all over the world all the seafarers around the world that those who are ready to to uh, be transferred or those who are finish their contract they couldn't leave the ship they couldn't leave uh, the the contract because nobody to relieve them nobody to uh, replace them um, so because of all the uh, restriction is happening uh, at the airports and the airlines are not are not operating all around the world so nobody uh, uh, will be able to relieve them so p these seafarers that are extended beyond their their contract are the ones that are suffering right now they are uh, they are uh, having a hard time of course they're missing their families they're uh, some of them are spending uh, almost more than a year uh, almost two years now in the ship because of this pandemic so um, just bear with with us it's going to be uh, i think it's gonna soon they're going to uh, they're going to change that and uh, and i hope that that uh, you will be home in your with your families so in the meantime um, we're going to look at the word of god the bible says that all the scripture is given by inspiration of god so uh, we need to get inspired we need to be strengthened we need to be uh, illuminated, uh, renewed, because uh, all the uh, what's happening around us is 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 very difficult to deal with, and uh, we we are concerned about our health. We're concerned about our uh, life. We're concerned about tomorrow, our jobs, and things like that. And um, it's great to to look at the word of God because the word of God is gives us inspiration and it also is profitable for for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness so uh second timothy 3 16 tells us that so um the question is how do we come uh how do we cope in our in this covid 19 pandemic crisis um I want you to look at Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, um, I'm going to start with verse 6, okay, I'll be reading verse 6 and 7, so that will be our uh, uh, text for today uh, concerning how to cope during the COVID-19 pandemic, so um, what is the word of God telling us? concerning crisis okay let's we're going to read here from the new king james version it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your request be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through christ jesus our lord Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this moment, this time of opportunity, Lord God, to, to share your word, Lord God, to learn the instruction that was given to us by your word. I pray, Lord God, that the seafarers and those who are listening will be encouraged, will be strengthened, will be inspired, oh Lord God, through what's happening around them, Lord God, and all the crisis that is happening to them, Lord. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the problems that the people go through, O oh Lord. And you have specific instruction for us, O oh Lord God, and how to deal 
with this situation. So I ask for the Holy Spirit to illuminate us, renew us, and give us uh, your word, inspiration of, of your word, oh God. Thank you so much. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. What this, the word of God tells us about crisis. Well, all of us are not, <coughs> excuse me, are not immune of crisis. We are not immune for all the problems. But um, all this crisis will will be much easier to bear if we know what to do. It's much easier to handle and we know how to cope uh, this crisis. So uh, when we know the Word of God and we apply it into our hearts, we are more uh, stronger and we are more um, understanding in what's going on around us and it, it avoids become confused and and become depressed because we know what's going on. So uh, so it's important for us to to know and learn what to do during a crisis in our lives. So this is written by Paul. Uh, he is addressing this uh, scripture uh, specifically. To the people of Philippi, the church in Philippi, and um, obviously they are going through some tough times. The people there, so he wanted to uh, encourage them, and he wrote this letter to the church in Philippi. And I believe this is also not just the church in Philippi, but also all throughout the church. Those who are um, uh, believers in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're going to, uh, I, I believe I found three, at least three instruction by Paul here, okay, and how to cope with the crisis. Number one, he says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. You know, um, this is uh, easier said than done, and uh, because when the problem comes, truly the first reaction, the first uh, thing that we feel is we become worried, we become fearful, we become afraid. And that's a natural thing. And that's, uh, you know, all of us are susceptible to that kind of worry. But the Bible tells us that we should not be worried. We should not be anxious. We should not be afraid. Uh, we have to understand the uh, the anatomy of, of worry. First, we have to understand the anatomy of worry. What does worry does to us? And that's why um, when we learn what does worry will do to us, we, we can learn, we can know how to avoid it. We don't know, we know how to, uh, to, uh, to address it. So uh, uh, the Bible says that uh, worry will not do us any good. So uh, no benefit and it's useless. It's a, although it's a, an emotion or it's a, a feeling, uh, the Bible says we should not feel that way, but rather we should be able to be trustful on God. We should be trusting on the Lord. Uh, in Matthew chapter six, this is more clearly tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 27 says, Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So it says, Jesus says, uh, Which one of you who worry can add one cubit to his stature? Now I look this, I look this up in the Amplified Bible because Amplified Bible will, will, will stretch the word and will give us more uh, meaning on what it says there because Sometimes this cubit, you know, one cubit, we don't use that word very often, so we don't understand it. Uh, so it says here in Amplified, which of you can add one hour to the length of his life? So in other words, um, uh, we cannot even add something to our lives. It's basically, it subtracts, meaning it takes something out of our lives 
It takes our joy. It takes our peace. It takes our our uh, our uh, is uh, being stable. So when we worry, it does not do or add something beneficial to us, but rather it removes something that is from us. It removes life. It removes joy. It removes peace. So we cannot um, uh, worry and find and find uh, peace at the same time. We cannot worry and find you know uh, strength at the same time. So we should avoid worrying. Um, how does we how how do we deal with that? Well, we need to teach uh, ourselves that that God knows our needs and God knows what's going on. God is not surprised and what's happening around me and you. God knows everything. He says, so therefore when he says, do not worry in, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, he says, um, let me open that real quick. It says, do not worry, he says in Matthew chapter 6. I'll start with verse 25. Uh, Okay, hold on for a second here. This is uh, Jesus saying, speaking. Uh, he says here, um, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. So when God says that, that means that um, uh, He already know what's going on. He already uh, seen it. He He's not surprised by it. So therefore, He says, do not worry about your life. Why? Because worry and anxiety is, is really bad for us. It's not, there's no good that will come out of that. There's as a matter of fact, it will damage more. It will harm us when we worry and when we are anxious. You know, we know that there are people who are worried and anxious. You know, it causes a lot of uh, stress. It causes uh, sickness. It causes, you know, ulcers and other disease. So it's not really good for our bodies to to handle those anxiety and worry so uh, <clears throat> we had to uh, reverse that and uh, we must trust the Lord with all of our hearts the Bible says that that we should not lean in our own understanding and in all of our ways we should acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths so in other words that the Bible says that we need to um, uh, Trust not our understanding, you know, but rather we trust the Lord. We lean, we don't lean on our own understanding because our under, under, under our understanding is limited. We only see the uh, what's what's in front of us. We don't see really the future. We don't see what's behind that, and that's why we worry. We only see the problems. We only see the crisis. We only see all the uh, the. Uh, the problems that is happening in front of us and we don't see the the real purpose of it so uh, we should not lean in our own understanding but yet, but yet in all of our ways whatever we do we have to acknowledge God and he shall direct our paths so God is going to direct our paths in a way that we will see the direction we will see clearly we will see that there is a purpose for our problems <clears throat> also uh first peter chapter 5 verse 7 tells us that casting all your care upon him for he cares for you so uh there right there casting all so we need to cast all of our cares whatever the moment that you're thinking, how is this going to happen? Why is this? And 
and you receive a bad news or you receive a uh, a not so good uh, uh, news that from home or from from your family, you know you 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 begin to to worry. So um, we need to uh, begin to understand that that God is in is in control. Okay, God is in control, and what's important is it's not what's happening to you okay the most the, the what's ha what's important is what's happening inside of you i don't know if you uh, understand what i'm saying it's it means that we might receive a problem we might uh hear news or something happen and that's happening to us and then what's going to be happening inside of us is going to be our response to that situation. So it's important for us that we respond well, that we respond, that we don't react to the situation. We have to respond in, in faith. We have to respond in faith, not in fear, not in anxiety, not in worry by acknowledging God uh, by uh, trusting in him and and um, you know giving us a uh, a sense of of direction giving us a sense of of uh, sanity when we begin to think about God in that situation so God knows what's going on and uh, I believe he's not surprised for this COVID-19 pandemic uh, he is actually uh, knows what's happening and he knows what to do and he encourages us to to look upon him he encourages us to focus on him you know uh, when we focus on him something supernatural something is happening something that is beyond our our human ability to understand you know when we focus on him focusing on him meaning uh we should we will not respond or react to the situation negatively but rather we respond positively by uh, trusting in the lord and by uh, doing what he has instructed us to do when we face difficulty when we face uh, problems and situation in our lives so he says look unto jesus you know the bible says we need to look unto jesus because he's the author and the finisher of our faith um, the bible says also that we need to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might we need to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might not in our might but his might not our power but his power so we must be able to draw um, strength from him by by casting all these cares to him okay you must be able to draw uh his his power and his might by casting because when we cast something that means that we uh, we we be able to uh, receive something okay uh, we have to cast that fear we have to cast that doubt we had to cast that unbelief. We had to cast that that anxiety, and because he cares for us, because we know he knows that all those uh, anxiety, worry, and doubt and fear are not gonna do any good to us, but rather it will harm us. It will it 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 will not help for the situation that we're in right now. So if we want help. We need to look up to God. We need to cast our cares. We need to to focus on Him. We need to look at our His strength, and not and not our own strength. Okay, so God is God will help you. God will rescue us. That's His promise to His word. He knows how to deliver the righteous from their troubles. So do not be afraid. Only believe. You know. Remember in the scripture, there's this. Um, this man who's 
his uh, uh, son is sick. Oh, I think his, his daughter. Uh, and then he came to Jesus and and then um, he he asked Jesus to heal his daughter. And then uh, and Jesus says, you know, I will come and heal heal her. And then and then this, there's a, a messenger came to this man and says, do not trouble the master because your daughter is dead. You know, um, so he re he he received that news during that time, and Jesus, knowing what's happening, he said to the man, he says, "Do not be afraid. Only believe." So we should not be afraid uh, for this pandemic. This COVID-19 pandemic, we should not be afraid on the crisis that we're in, but we should believe. Believe that God will deliver us from this uh, crisis. So, um, God commanded us to be strong and be courageous, and God knows how to take care of people, and we just have to put our trust in Him. So, one number one is, Try to control anxiety. Do not worry. How do you control that? We need to look unto Jesus. We need to uh, cast our cares. We need to know, we need to, to teach ourselves that God is in control. God is there for us. He said to cast those those bad news, cast those uh those uh, anxiety, those doubt, those fear, cast it to Him. And God will give us His strength. And the number two we need to do is, it says in Philippians chapter uh, 4, it says, But in everything, so be anxious for nothing. Jesus said also, do not worry about your life. So because worry will not do any good. But it will harm us. But, he says, but. Okay, he says, but in everything, in in prayer, in supplication, let your request be made known to God. So I think that moment, we, we should not be afraid. We should not be fearful. We should not be worried. But rather, so instead of uh, reacting, instead of, worrying instead of uh, being fearful you need to come to God and begin to pray about that situation that's how God wants us to 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 uh, to handle the problems that's how God wants us to approach that's how God wants us to uh, uh, take care of this situation just stop worrying, do not worry, do not be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. So what are you going to pray? Well, you're going to pray for God's will to be done. You know, the Bible says that uh, we should pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let God will, let God, let God's will be done in that situation. You know, most of the time when when I pray, you know, I ask God, Lord, um, I pray that your will be done in this situation. I pray that you, uh, your purpose will be done here in my life as it is in heaven. Because God has already has a purpose and plan for us. And uh, the Bible says, I have seen nor ear or heard what, you know, what the... Uh, what God has prepared for them. You know, I believe God in heaven, He has already had a purpose and plan for every person's lives. And and He wants that to be accomplished in our lives here on earth. And the way to be able to, to accomplish is we had to submit to His will. We had to uh, follow, obey Him, and we had to... Um, uh, acknowledge him and and then he will give us the right path direction and where to go and so that 
that purpose and 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 uh, plan will be accomplished in our lives. I believe there's no problem that will come to us without any purpose. God has a purpose for every situation that is happening to us. Why? Because He loved us and He has a plan for us. Amen. So, um, and also um, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, uh, what else did Jesus said here? Excuse me. Jesus says here, um, do not worry about your life, what you will eat and what you drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's, it's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. And then he looked at here, he, he, he went down to uh, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So he says, all of these things, we should not worry, we should not be fearful, but he says, seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. So therefore, when we hear a situation, when we are in a crisis like this, in COVID-19, we should not fear, we should not worry, but we should trust the Lord learn knowing that he is in control and then we have to pray for that situation lord what do you what is your plan here lord i i seek your face lord i seek your will lord i want your will be done in my life so you begin to pray about that situation those of you who are in the ship uh those who are being extended uh in your contract and you have to pray like lord um I pray that your will be done in this situation. I know this is this is um, this is just a problem. This is just a temporary thing, and I pray that your will be done in my life, in my family, in my work, in my career, as it is in heaven. Whatever His plan and purpose, that it might happen here in our lives. So I believe God using all these things in our lives so that his plan and purpose will be accomplished you know so uh we have to pray we have to uh in everything pray for everything whatever you worry if you worry about the money if you worry about uh your family if you worry about you know the sickness you know the uh the pandemic you know the uh coronavirus if you if you're worried about that pray for that pray that pray that you will be protected pray that your family will be protected from coronavirus ask the lord to cover them with your with the precious blood of jesus christ because the bible says that uh, uh, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we may be the righteousness of god in christ jesus he became sin for us he became curse for us so that means that Jesus Christ, His blood, will re has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I believe all the sicknesses and diseases are cursed. So uh, this is from the enemy, not from God. And God deliver us. God uh, rescue us. God stop the curse when the blood is applied. We have overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So, through the blood of Jesus, pray for for uh, provision. You know, ask for God to provide. So all these things, you know, pray for everything. He says, seek you first, Lord. What what's your what's your what's your uh, will in this situation, Lord? We pray that we will respond well, that we will respond positively and in faith and not in fear. Learning, knowing that, belie believing that God has a purpose in all of this, and God has a plan, and we need to trust His plan and purpose will be done. So, the last but not the least is He says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, says, Let the peace of God that pass all understanding will guard your heart and minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord so 
God's peace, not as the world give, but what God gives. Um, all of us, when we face situation, you know, we need not to worry. And second, we need to pray about that situation, about everything that we worry about, we have to pray about it. And then he says, let the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will let you, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That means that we need the peace of God. The peace of God is, is in Him. Uh, it's all about Him. He is the Prince of Peace. You know, we will never have a peace without God inside of us. We need a peace that comes from God, not from the world. There are peace that comes from the world, but there are peace that comes from God. In order for us to have a peace of God, I believe there are three things we need to deal with. Number one is we must be at peace with God. We will never have a peace of God without the peace, without the peace with God. You could not have God, you cannot have peace without God because He is God. He is the peace that passes all understanding. He is the peace. He is the Prince of Peace. So, in other words, we must be at peace with God. We need to receive God into our hearts. We need to receive Christ, the Prince of Peace, into our hearts. If you have not received Him as your Lord and Savior, this is the time we need to do that. We need to receive. We need to be at peace. We need to repent of our sins. We need to uh, turn away from our wicked ways. We need to turn and repent from our wicked ways. We need to re repent from our sins. We need to have no barrier between us and God. So all those things is um, keeping us from from having God in our lives. That's why the way to do that is to repent of our sins and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. And then I believe you're going to have God into your life. And secondly, we must be at peace with ourselves. Uh, you know, we need to, once, once we ask God for forgiveness for our sins, you know, he, he forgave us and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And also, we need to forgive ourselves. Why? Because sometimes we are overcome by guilt, shame. You know, we keep blaming ourselves about our past sins. And then we have not been able to forgive ourselves. We should not be hard on ourselves. If God be able to forgive us, we must also be able to forgive ourselves. So we need to forgive ourselves. Don't be hard on yourself. Say, self, I forgive you. I now settle this with God. You, you put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And once is, you ask for forgiveness, the Bible says that He has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Amen and amen. That's the best, one of the best feeling in the world is to be forgiven by God. And last but not least is we must be at peace with others. So what that means is you must be able to forgive other people in your heart. You know, one of the things that that's as, uh, hindering our our forgiveness is we're not able to forgive others. So we need to forgive those who who have sinned against us, who mistreated us, who took advantage of us. We must be able to forgive them so that our Heavenly Father will forgive us. You know, so we need to be at peace with God. We need to get right with God. We need to get right with ourselves. We need to get right with others. So because of that, God will, you will be able to experience the peace of God. And this peace, the Bible says, has the ability to defend, to guard against the enemy, against 
fear against all those worries and anxiety. And the peace of God really is, the, it reassures our heart. It transcends our understanding, all understanding. You know, there are a lot of things that uh, uh, we cannot uh, explain. One of those is that peace has the ability to uh, protect us from the anxiety of the world. The peace is a, began a strong guard against all those uh, fear and anxiety that the enemy is causing us to have. And But God says, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Because the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that you might have life and more abundant life. So finally, um, this is uh, we need to do is first we had to uh, do not worry, do not be anxious, but rather trust the Lord, knowing that He is in control. And secondly, you have to pray. We need to cast our cares. We need to seek the Lord. We need to seek His will. And we need to pray for everything. And then third, let the peace of God uh, rule and reign in our hearts. So when we, are, when we have this peace, God wants us to maintain that peace. How do we maintain that peace? Well, Philippians tells us that um, Paul has encouraged the church. He says here, Finally, brethren, what's, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, whatever things of, of any virtue or there's any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You know, in this day and age, we need more of good news rather than bad news. Um, we know that the the almost every day they have uh, deaths uh, uh, who are infected by coronavirus, and one of the things that they they are not showing is is what the people recover from from the virus. You know, there are more people recover than those who are dying. And um, we need more of good news. We need more of, of uh, in, uh, encouraging news. And one of the encouraging word, news, I believe, is to look at the Word of God. We need to look at what God's plan is and what good news that He has to say for us. So He's... His word is good news. That's why they call it gospel. Gospel means good news. We need to w read the word of God. We need to fill our hearts with the good news, not the bad news or even fake news. You know, it's okay to look at news, but we should not focus. We should not be dominated on the news outside. We need to be dominated by the news of God, the good news. And what God is doing, you know, we need to learn that uh, there are more good things that God is doing in this pandemic than bad things that is happening. You know, we need to focus on what God is doing instead of what the enemy is doing during this pandemic. So one of the good news that is happening all around the world, I believe, is people began to uh, be shaken, be, begin to know that their life is short and that they begin to get close to God. And I believe one of the good things that happened is people begin to get close to God. Uh, they have nowhere to go. They are quarantined. They are uh, questioning. And a lot of people beginning to realize that that only God is their answer and their source. So in this pandemic, we either get closer or we get more fearful. So 
people who think about God and trust in God, they get stronger. People who does not think about God, they are more fearful. So knowing that life is short, we must make the most of it. We learn that all it matters is our relationship with God and our family and others. So you know, all, the, all these things begin to uh, take its place and, and the priority in life. You know, uh, one of the also good things that's happening, uh, families are getting close to each other because they are quarantined. They are get, they uh, nowhere to go. Pe uh, they were forced to spend time together uh, during the quarantine. And also, uh, one of the good things that people are becoming, uh, developing a good habit of healthy lifestyle because they wash their hands more often. They have masks, you know, they they disinfect everything and they were more uh, conscious of health. They are more conscious of, of uh, protecting themselves from the disease. And uh, the last one is, uh, I believe there's no pollution because most people doesn't drive and there are less crime and less accident. So those are great things that is happening. And of course, what we are excited about is what God is doing in your life right now. If you have not really um, uh, commit your life to Jesus Christ, you know, this is a great time for you to, to understand that God has a purpose for everything. He has a purpose and I believe all this pandemic is happening so that God will 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 show Himself uh, powerful and great and miracles is begin to happen. You know, um, God has a plan for each one of us. So um, give your life to Jesus, and and I believe God is is gonna start doing uh, fulfilling His His purpose in your life. Would you pray with me? And uh, we're going to close this. And uh, uh, thank you for, for listening. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for uh, our our friends and families and our seafarers' friends who are listening. I pray, Father God, that your will be done in their lives today. I pray that you will turn things around, O oh Lord God, for good, O oh Lord. You will cause all things to to, uh, to do good, Lord God. And and I thank you, Father God, that you are touching every person's lives, Lord, and realizing that uh, what's important here on this earth is our relationship and our uh, relationship with our families, so Lord God. Lord, I pray, Father God, that, that every Christian right now, Lord, will, will begin to, uh, to trust you, Lord God, that they will not worry, that they will cast their care to you, Lord God, that they will not be anxious, that they will not be fearful, but rather, Lord, they are praying, O oh Lord. They're asking God. They're asking God to forgive them. They're asking God to to uh, to uh, give a, a re, uh, give a solution to their to their problems, O oh Lord God. And Lord, and I thank you, Father God, that they're letting the peace of God to rule and to reign into their hearts right now, O oh Lord. I pray, Father God, for those of you who have, I pray for those who have not received Christ as their Lord and Savior. I pray that they will receive you as their Lord and Savior. If if, if you are that person, would you just uh, pray with me right now and mean it with your hearts and mind and uh, accept the Lord into your heart. Pray for Pray like this, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I thank you, Father God, that you have a plan and purpose in my life. And your plan and purpose in my life is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I receive him now into my heart. I thank you for forgiving my sins and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I ask you, Lord God, to help me to walk with you every day of my life. I thank you for saving me. I receive the gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Amen and amen. Thank you again for listening. I pray that you are well, that you are staying uh, healthy, and and God will uh, continue to fulfill His plan and purpose in your life. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.